streetcars are fascinating vehicles. They are not buses on rails. They are not trains in the street. They are simply unique and they play a unique part in the history of El Paso. El Paso has many historic vehicles, but for transit, this is where it all started. I guess you could call mule car number one the original survivor. She was built in the years immediately following the Civil War, most likely in the late 1860s. We don't know the exact date, but we do know the builder was the John Stevenson Company of New York. This mule car didn't come to El Paso new. It was probably used in San Antonio for 15 or 16 years before showing up in El Paso in 1882 to work on the new streetcar line. Old number one inaugurated El Paso's first mass transit system. Notice I didn't say rapid transit. The mule cars were known for slow and bumpy rides. Today's generation wants to call this car Mandy. This was not Mandy. Mandy was a mule. It was around this car, though, that the story of Mandy, El Paso's most famous mule, grew to become a local legend. Back in 1905, that would have been three years after the new electric cars were introduced, a visiting newspaper man from St. Louis reminisced about Mandy and the mule car. This is what he said. It was my fortune, when in El Paso some years back, to ride a car drawn by Mandy. I shall not say how slow we traveled, because if I did, I would not be believed. After riding and waiting, principally waiting, for an hour or two, Mandy came to a dead stop in the middle of the block, and to all appearances, went to sleep. The driver urged her in soft tones to proceed, and finally, he shook the lunge gently. Still, there was nothing doing. Mandy slept. The driver calmly resigned himself to the inevitable, sat down on his stool, and rolled a cigarette, and placidly smoked. Now losing patience, I accosted him. Why don't you make that mule go, I asked. Cause it ain't in a going humor, he answered serenely. Why don't you whip it? it? Ain't got no whip, he answered, beginning to look sullen. But there's lots of loose rocks on the street, I persisted. Pick up some of them and pelt him with them. The driver rose from his stool, threw away his cigarette stub and eyed me scornfully. Stranger, he said, that mule there's Mandy. If I should hit Mandy, I'd be shot before I had time to draw another breath. He's a privileged character, that old white mule he is. He's an adopted child of this town. Then he rolled another cigarette, touched me for a match, and resumed his smoke. I left the car and walked the remainder of the distance. The streetcar in use at the time was a little bobtailed affair which, with judicious squeezing, would hold eight persons, providing none were very fleshy. The rails were thin strips of iron or tin. About half the time the wheels would run on the rails, the rest of the time they would bump over the cobblestones. The car seemed to bump and teeter and clatter fully one way as they did the other. One prominent businessman told me that if his wife wanted a spool of thread or a sack of flour, or almost anything else, she would listen for the tinkle of the bell that was suspended from the collar of the streetcar mule. When she heard that bell coming, she would go out and tell the driver what she wanted and give him the money to buy it with. On the return trip, he would bring the stuff into the house and she would reward him with a small gratuity. Mule car number one became a survivor and not a skeleton. Through a series of fortuitous events, too many to go into right now, suffice to say, she passed through several hands until 1950 when she was found in a badly deteriorated state behind the city line's barn. Under the oversight of the El Paso County Historical Society, she was restored and put on display in 1955 in the San Jacinto Plaza. 
However, in 1969, she was evicted from that site and moved to a display shelter at Cleveland Square. She had to be moved again recently to make room for the construction of the new History Museum. Plans are now for the mule car to be restored once again and displayed in an appropriate historic location. El Paso's first mule car, a true survivor. The streetcar system in El Paso was responsible in a large part for the development of neighborhoods. It became easy for the homeowner in Manhattan Heights, Highland Park, Government Hill, Sunset Heights, and Kern Place, for example, to get into town for work and shopping. For six cents, you could get a transfer and travel from one edge of the city to the other. In the 1920s and 1930s, the automobile was beginning to take hold, but still not every household owned one. Many El Pasoans still relied on streetcars to get to work. The railroads and the smelters were the largest industries in those days, and most of their workers used the electric cars to get to work. One of the early cars, this skeleton of streetcar number 54 sits forlornly in the New Mexico desert. Number 54 was built in 1922 and came to El Paso from Houston in 1940 when traffic picked up and El Paso was short of cars. This headlight illuminated many in El Paso street. Number 54 was used on the Fort Bliss, Washington Park, and Wattis lines. 54 and its sister, 58, were regulars on the Fort Bliss line. The end of the line looped around a little rock building near the present day Cassidy Gate. Sometimes automobiles would be parked on the loop. However, since the 54 was a double ender, the motorman would simply reverse the trolley poles and change directions. Traffic to Fort Bliss boomed during the World War II period. However, since City Lines was intent on converting all lines to buses, the last Fort Bliss streetcar ran on August 17, 1947. Today it seems unlikely that number 54 will ever be restored. The desert and the weather have taken their toll. A skeleton, but not a survivor. By 1950, only the Juarez line remained. Since the transit agreement with Mexico specified street railway, the El Paso City lines realized they needed to update their fleet. In 1950, they were still using cars dating back to as early as 1912. That is when El Paso bought 20 streetcars from the San Diego transit system. Renowned El Paso artist Jose Cisneros once worked for the city lines. He was responsible for decorating some of the cars in his own inimitable style. Eventually, after Mexico stopped the cars from crossing the border in 1973, the city of El Paso took over the operation and continued it until 1974 on the U.S. side. The last streetcar ran in May 1974.
This streetcar, number 1510, is now a gift shop here at 3rd and Mesa Street in downtown El Paso. It was built in 1937 and ran in San Diego from 1937 to 1949. During World War II, it carried thousands of sailors, marines, and defense workers. In its own way, it helped win the war. It came to El Paso in 1950 and worked another 22 years. During that time, it is estimated that this streetcar carried more than 2 million passengers back and forth across the border. Number 1510, a true survivor. PCC is a second generation streetcar, if you will. Its Art Deco styling represents the streamlining era of the late 30s. But the best thing about this car is its simplicity and its durability. What distinguishes a streetcar from other vehicles? Take a look at this steel wheel. It ran on rails and was powered by electricity through a trolley pole contacting an overhead wire. This is a real trolley, not a diesel bus with a trolley-like body. Our streetcars had many advantages. These cars could carry twice as many people as most buses at about half the operating costs. El Paso cars like number 1510 and the other nine survivors put in 34 years of service and still could be restored and go out on the line if need be. When we had clean electric transit in the 70s, why did we return to the pollution of diesel buses? The ironic answer is that this may be the only trolley that failed because it was too successful. It had been long opposed by Ciudad Juarez merchants because they believed it was too convenient for the Mexican citizen to travel to El Paso to shop. Whether it makes sense or not, they did everything in their power to keep the trolleys from being reinstated. Never mind that an informed public should have a say in their own modes of transportation. Light rail and vintage trolley lines are springing up all around the country in Dallas, Little Rock, Tucson, Memphis, Denver, and San Diego, to name a few. We have the knowledge. We have the equipment. Our time is now.